Welcome back to your physics notes. Today what we're going to talk about is uh, Newton's second law, which we've seen before. But now we're going to look at a different case, whereas before, when we were using Newton's second law, we were looking at objects that were in equilibrium. But now we will look at the full version of Newton's second law, and we'll apply it to different situations where the object may or may not be accelerating. So there's nothing really new here. Um, Newton's second law is still that the sum of the forces are equal to the mass of the object times the object's acceleration. And remember that uh, force and acceleration, those are all vectors. So this is something that can be applied in both the x and the y dimension. So previously when we looked at things, we might have had an object that was sitting on, let's say, a frictionless surface. And there were multiple forces acting on it. Maybe there was a... Uh, a force coming in from this side, pushing the object with a force F. Another one from this side, pushing with the force F. You had the earth pulling down on the object, and you had the surface itself pushing up on the object. And what we did there is we said that, well, since the object is at rest, or maybe it's moving at constant speed, the sum of the forces have to be zero. So the sum of the forces in the X dimension have to add up to zero and the sum of the forces in the y dimension have to add up to zero. And from that logic, we could see that this downward force and this upward force must be equal to each other to add up to zero. And the one coming in from the right and the one coming in from the left must also be equal to each other so they can add up to zero. But it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. Um, in most situations that we're going to look at, there will be some acceleration, either in the x, y, or both dimensions. Um, so let's take a very similar example, and let's say now we have that same block on a frictionless surface, and there is one force acting on it in the x dimension, and that force is pulling, pushing the object to the right. So let's call that a force F, and that gives it some um, net force in, to the right, and so it'll accelerate. So how do we, how do we analyze this problem? Well, we do the exact same thing we would have done over here which is always start, I'm going to write my little steps up here, so you start with a free body diagram. So to do that, that dot right there will represent my block. You have, you remember you identify the uh, objects it's interacting with. This block is interacting with the earth itself, and the earth is pulling it down. That interaction is called the weight of the block. And then it's interacting with the surface that it's on, and this a particular interaction is called the normal force, always perpendicular to the surface. I told you that the, that the surface is frictionless, so that's the only surface interaction. There's no friction. And we have this force F coming in from the right, pushing it, or from the left, pushing it to the right. So now if I wanted to know what the acceleration of this is, we've drawn our free body diagram. Our next step is to define our dimensions. So in this case, I'm going to say that up is positive x and to the right is positive y. And from that, you can see that uh, if I apply Newton's second law, the y dimension, there is no net force because, and you can see that from the description of the object's motion, it's accelerating to the right. It's not accelerating upwards or downwards. So in the y dimension, my net forces should add up to zero. But in the x dimension, there is an unbalanced force, so it should have an acceleration. After you define your dimensions, you write Newton's second law. And you'll do that for x and the y dimensions. So you actually write Newton's second law twice, because since they're vectors, they're kind of independent from each other. So I'll do that. So the sum of the forces in the y dimension, I'll start with that, are n, which is in the positive direction, minus the weight, which is in the ne negative direction, equals zero. So from that, it follows, I could say that normal force is equal to the weight of the object. So there's some information that I can extract from that. And then in the x dimension, Newton's second law, look at my forces. I only have one. It's F. But now that's not equal to zero. That's going to be equal to the object's mass times its acceleration. So if I wanted to find the object's acceleration, I could solve for that. The object's acceleration is equal to that net force acting on it, that force F, divided by 
the mass of the object. So that's a uh, simplified version. Uh, we could look at some more complicated problems. For example, this is an old AP problem. So you can see um, what we have here is two cases. You've got a block on a plane, and there, there is friction. They give you the coefficient of friction here. And there's a force downwards of 50 newtons. And then they give you a second situation where it's exa everything is exactly the same, but instead of just a force downwards, there's a block with five kilograms of mass hanging. So the first thing they want me to do is calculate the acceleration of the 10 kilogram block in case one. Well, what I would do is I would follow our steps. So in case one, we draw a free body diagram. Remember, the first thing you do is identify the object you're looking at. And I want the acceleration of the 10 kilogram block. So that is my object. So if I draw a free body diagram for that, first thing I would do is describe the interactions with other objects. I have the weight, which is going to be equal to mg. I have the normal force with the surface, which is going to be, I'm going to call that n. I have the tension in the rope. Let's call that t. And then I have friction between the surface. And it says it's sliding, so I'm going to call that kinetic friction, okay? So now you can see what they want us to do in the, in the, uh, in the problem is calculate the acceleration. Well, my next step is the same thing as before. I'm going to define my axes. I'm going to say that this is positive x and this is positive y. As a rule of thumb, I pretty much always align my axes with the direction of the acceleration. So now, Newton's second law, sum of the forces in the y dimension are equal to n minus mg. And there's no acceleration in the y dimension in this case, so that's equal to zero. And now the sum of the forces in the x dimension are going to be the tension, T, minus friction equals the mass of the block times its acceleration. So now uh, my next question, if I want to know what A is, is do I have enough information to solve for that? Well, I could do a little bit of algebra here and I could rearrange this. So acceleration is gonna be equal to whatever T is minus whatever friction is divided by the mass of the block, which we're talking about a 10 kilogram block. So now I need to know what T is and I need to know what the force of friction is. Well, you might recall that kinetic friction is easy. That's an equation. So kinetic friction is always equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. And if I look at my y dimension up here, since n minus mg equals zero, I can solve for n. That is going to be equal to the weight of the block. Okay, So I know what n is. And then the coefficient of friction is given to me in the problem. It's 0 0.2. So I could rewrite this. That's going to be uk times mg, which is what n is. Okay, And now what is t? Well, if you look at the description, there's a 50 newton force pulling down on the rope. So that's what provides the tension is that 50 newton force. So that is T. So now I can go ahead and I should have all the information I need. T is 50 newtons minus the coefficient of friction times the weight of the object. Well, the coefficient of friction is 0 0.2. The weight of the object, it's a 10 kilogram block. So that's 10 kilograms times g, which is 10 meters per second squared. So that gives me 100 newtons, 10 times 10. So 0.2 times 100 is 20. So 50 minus 20 newtons divided by the mass of the object, which was 10 kilograms. And if I do my math now, I have 30 newtons divided by 10 kilograms, and that gives me 3 meters per second squared, which is my acceleration. So that's how you would solve, apply Newton's second law to solve for the acceleration of the block in case one. Now, you see part B, it says on the diagrams below, draw and label all the forces acting on each block in case two. Well, I should be able to solve this problem also. So if I look at case two, it's the exact same situation, but now I just have two blocks. So for the 10 kilogram block, I'm going to have, here's my dot, 
the weight, which is mg, which in this case, if you think about it, the mass is 10 kilograms, g is 10 meters per second squared, so that's going to be 100 newtons. And then I have the normal force on the surface, which we already said that n has to be equal to the weight in this case because of our Newton's second law equation for the y dimension. Then I have T, and then I have kinetic friction. So that is block one. Now, here's the tricky part, is I no longer really know what T is because the situation has changed. So I'm not going to put in numbers for that, but those are the forces on the, the 10 kilogram block. Now, the 5 kilogram block is hanging. So now let's describe the forces and interac the interactions for that guy, you've got the weight of the earth pulling down on it, that's mg, and then you have the tension pulling up. And there's no other no surface interaction or anything like that, so here's a free body diagram for that. Now, the only thing that I would look at and worry about if I was doing this on an exam is I want to be clear that this mass and this mass, those aren't the same thing. This is the mass of the 10 kilogram block, this is the mass of the 5 kilogram block. And then part C, calculate the acceleration of the 10 kilogram block in case two. I'm going to come back and solve this in a second video, which will, uh, which will look at how to solve problems involving two separate masses and treating them as one to find an easy solution to a problem. All right, good luck.